Hello. We talked already about uh, thread and open thread, how we use it with uh, Safia, and about core app and uh, Meta. But another interesting topic is Bluetooth. I mean, with our developer kits, they are also able to use Bluetooth, and for Meta, it's also necessary to use Bluetooth for the commissioning. Um, and I think everybody from you uh, had already contact with Bluetooth. But what is Bluetooth is actually for a lot of people not so 100% clear because there are a lot of technologies which are combined now in Bluetooth. Um, we have the Bluetooth Classic, which is uh, first um, published in uh, around 2000, I think, I think um, 1999 around in this year. And this was the original version. It's also known as Bluetooth BR or EDR, which is uh, short for Bluetooth Basic Rate Enhanced Data Rate. Uh, this is uh, first developed for um, reliable communication with high data rate. In earlier times, when we had a mobile phone and we want to exchange data, we using the infrared and putting the devices near together and so on. And there was a need for a new standard and this, is, um, this was Bluetooth. So it's for high data rate and it's mostly like uh, just a serial communication. Yeah? Uh, the communication works also about a, a module which is called Serial Port Profile. Um, it has 79 channels with a frequency while, uh, width of 1 megahertz. Uh, what um, we are uh, these days using mostly is actually Bluetooth Low Energy. Yeah, Bluetooth Low Energy is still quite new. It's added 2010 in the Bluetooth specifications and so came into the specification with the version 4.0 and it's actually a totally different technology so Bluetooth Low Energy is not equal to Bluetooth. Yeah, It's working even with um, 40 different channels with a frequency width of 2 MHz. It's defined for low energy consumption and uh, allows on this uh, uh, battery powered heart rate monitors or other battery powered devices yeah. um, and it works not like a serial communication it works with the client server principle yeah. <coughs> here we're seeing the stack overview bow, uh, from both um, we cannot really compare it with the OC reference model because the layers are not 100% fitting. Um, so uh, we have here Bluetooth Classic um, and we have here a controller layer and a host layer in both. Yeah? So controller layer are quite similar. Yeah? We have the physical layer and the link layer and we have here uh, interface connection, host controller interface and then the host part from both <coughs> stacks yeah and we're seeing here the serial port profile from the Bluetooth classic and here we're having a few more modules yeah I will come to this in details because this is for us not so interesting it's just a serial communication um, for high data rate and so on this is a more common one and our Nordic devices also support this but then to understand how GAP, GET and ATT is working, this is um, fundamental to be able to employ your, um, to implement your own application. I mentioned before that we're having two layers or in both, in Bluetooth Classic and in Bluetooth Low Energy, which is a controller and the host part. The controller part um, is for the radio um, hardware related aspects, yeah, like controlling the transceivers, modulation and the frequency channel selection. Yeah. Um, it's making the direct communication. So host part provides the actual Bluetooth functionality for an application. Yeah. 
depends on if you want to have Bluetooth Low Energy or Bluetooth Classic. Um, this separation um, was, yeah, uh, had an advantage in earlier times since the host and controller um, part enabling implementation on different chips. Yeah, since um, in earlier times the chips were not so powerful as a microcontroller, so you can separate the task and um, it was quite convenient. But nowadays, typically we have a single chip solution, so we have the host and controller part normally in one stack and in one chip, and the transceiver is also in this chip integrated. But now let's take a closer look in the GET. Um, this is a main basic for Bluetooth Low Energy to understand this. GET is short for Generic Attribute Profile. Yeah. With the GET you see here the module belonging to this host part. Um, we defining our data and what we want to uh, uh, serve to clients and um, these services um, have an ID, yeah, they are predefined IDs, um, these are 16-bit UR IDs from uh, SIG, so a Bluetooth organization, they are predefined. Um, we have, say, for example, the environmental sensing service, yeah, has a UID from uh, 181A in hex code. Um, every service has then attributes, we call this in Bluetooth Low Energy characteristics. Uh, um, this is what we uh, uh, provide for the client. For example, the environmental sensing service has three characteristics. This is pressure, temperature and humidity. Um, they are having also a predefined UID from the SIG and um, there is a document where you're seeing also different kinds of services and predefined characteristic and with every characteristic which is predefined there is a special data type and um, how the data is stored yeah, for temperature that it's then um, uh, yeah, we'll see a shortened example how it's then stored. <coughs> You can also implement custom services. They have then a 128-bit ID. There are online generators for a custom ID when you want to make a custom service and nothing fitting um, to your device which you are develop. Here is a short example, um, typical example for a GUT server. Yeah. We're having here the environment sensing service with the temperature characteristic, humidity characteristic, and pressure characteristic. And I can, uh, of course, add something, another service there uh, also, um, like the battery level characteristic. Yeah? It's also a predefined characteristic. And um, you seeing here, um, I am uh, using um, NRF tool from Nordic to read out this value with a stick and an application. You can read it out also with your mobile phone. And here you're seeing the environmental sensing service um, with the three characteristics, temperature, humidity, and pressure, and also the UID, which is there. And if it's only allowed for reading or writing, and you're seeing here we're having the value, for example, 31.24 degree. Uh, they are stored normally, uh, uh, how they are stored is also defined, so this means we're having um, for the temperature integer value, for example, with four digits uh, um, and the um, last two digits are then the part so after decimal part. Yeah. So, um, same with humidity. Uh, uh, when you want to define then your own services, or for example, if the, uh, precision here is not enough for you, yeah, so you need a more um, um, a resolution here, then you can define your own characteristic and implement it with more resolution, for example. The next step is then um, the module ATT. 
ATT is short for Attribute Protocol and Sys enables uh, exchange from Sys attributes. Yeah? Um, attribute is then a composition of four components, uh, UID, um, attribute reference, the attribute rights and then the attribute values. Uh, and this is then for exchanging the uh, characteristic defined uh, in the GET server. The next part what we're having is uh, GAP, it's a generic access profile, which is here on the top. This is responsible for the connection uh, and the, the setup and the type. And we're having here two different kinds of connection, a connection-less and a connection-orientated data exchange. Um, so more uh, common one is a connection orientated, but uh, also the connection less is sometimes used. So connection less exchange, um, for example, when you only want to send peri periodical data yeah, um, via broadcast, it's called advertising. Since the GET server acting as a broadcaster, for example, I want to inform someone about the air quality yeah? and uh, I wa don't want to make it um, exclusive for one device. I want to give it to a lot, yeah? send the client acting as observer. It's not guaranteed that the device getting the message, but when it's in range, it, uh, the broadcaster, like for every minute, getting new or sending new values and the client acting as um, observer. Yeah, so this is suitable for suitable for applications where data needs to be regularly updated and low latency is not so critical. So more common one, uh, which is more often used and uh, for sure you also use it already, it's a connection orientated exchange. There's a GUT server acting as a peripheral. The names are a little bit confusing since peripheral uh, sounds a little bit like it's not so important device and it's not like a server. Yeah? We would think a central would be the server, but uh, be careful. Yeah? Uh, the GUT server is the peripheral. This is, for example, um, when I'm having a heart rate sensor, it's a GUT server which offers uh, um, heart rate. Yeah? But my client is the central and it can be, for example, a mobile phone. Yeah? So um, the central connecting to the peripheral. Uh, so initially, uh, this works also with advertisement. So um, the uh, peripheral uh, advertise its service which it's offer. And when the central is interested, it establish a connection to the peripheral. Uh, and sending a connection request to it. Yeah? And then afterwards, then there is no advertising anymore, so it's an exclusive connection from the peripheral to the central. Yeah? All together, of course, um, it's not exclusive. This means a central can also be a peripheral. I, my mobile phone can work as peripheral for another device, for example. Yeah? Then we're having two uh, other modules, which we skipped at the beginning. There's a module SMP. I don't want to go much into details. It's managed the security. Um, so it's also short for security manager protocol, so that it's encrypted and so on. So um, we are using here the standard methods, yeah, encryption, um, AES, and so on. Um, yeah. Then we're having here L2CAP, so a logical link control and adaption layer protocol. And this is actually a, like again an interface between the uh, host controller interface and the modules here on the top. Yeah. It's um, multiplexing the packages to the modules which um, are needed so uh, if the security first to the SMP and so on. Um, and it's also responsible to fragment larger uh, data.
packets and reassembles them. This was a short introduction into Bluetooth, Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth Low Energy. How does it work? For sure you already uh, use it a lot of times. You connect your mobile phone with uh, some device like a um, uh, headset or a uh, smartwatch or heart rate monitor or some other device where you read out something. So it's quite often used and it's quite convenient. It has limitations, it offers only star topology, so when it's used in smart homes um, it's limited, especially with the range. Uh, there's something which is called Bluetooth Mesh. Um, I will introduce you to this a little bit later in another video. Uh, it's based on Bluetooth Low Energy, but has also a few limitations, so I think Thread uh, is real mesh network, Bluetooth Low Energy, just making, for example, broadcast uh, in Bluetooth Low Energy Mesh. If you're interested into this topic a little bit more in WSN, in IoT, I can recommend you my book. It's give you a big overview about all the techniques, protocols. Um, it doesn't go too deep into the details, but it deep enough that you understand the most basic concepts, um, so it's uh, also about security, about the protocols, Meta, Core App, um, Zigbee uh, and Ocean, LoRaWAN and so on. Also about sensors, measurement chain, uh, what can happen there in the measurement chain, how to convert signals from analog to digital, what kind of interfaces you can use to communicate with sensors and also um, how you can make data acquisition and so on. So it just new out now also in English. I provide the link into the description. I hope you like it and also support me buying the book, of course. Um, in the next video, I will make then a practical example with Bluetooth Low Energy and the NRF Connect SDK. Um, so, see you in the next video.